Hi guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? So pleased to see you today. Thanks for popping along and spending part of your day with us. So today I've got a weave demonstration. Now it's a bit of a mouthful. Let's see if I can get this right. I'll be demonstrating how to do the Orbital Super Barris 4-in-1 chain. <laughs> it's quite an impressive name, isn't it? Uh, this weave was designed, I believe, by Mithril Weaver. Um, and uh, let's just get straight into it, guys, shall we? Okay, so here are some sample pieces of the weave that we'll be doing today. Um, popping up here on the side of um, the screen will be the ring sizes that I used for each gauge system. But this one over here is the 14 gauge AWG or 1.6 millimeter diameter wire version. Um, this one is the 16 gauge AWG, 1.2 millimeter diameter wire. This one is 18 gauge AWG, one millimeter diameter wire. And this one here is 20 gauge AWG or 0.8 millimeter diameter wire. So I tried to come up with ring sizes that would work with the anodized rings that we have available. Unfortunately, I didn't have um, the smaller size in the anodized rings for the 14 gauge. They are available. Um, we just don't sell them at Aussie Mail. So I just swapped it around and did the big rings on the outside. So um, you know, it's, it's still quite an effective version if you want to go that way. So most of these are pretty good fits. The um, 18 gauge version I found was probably the loosest of the weaves. Um, I really like the 16 gauge version. It uh, holds its shape and works quite well. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this today in the 16 gauge AWG version. So to start this weave, you'll need to create two pieces of a simple chain like this. Each piece needs to be approximately the length that you want your final bracelet to be. Okay, so if um, I'm using two colours here, you don't need to do that. Of course, you can use just all of the same colour. It's totally up to you. Um, I've just chosen to go to the two colours today uh, to help show the weave. So once you've got those simple chains made up to the length that you need it to be, you can either just grab a twist tie and put it through both of them and hold them together, or you can put a single ring through there. You'll need to eventually put that ring through, so you might as well pop it on there now and then close that up. So I'm just using the same size ring that I use to make the center chain up. You can make it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, whatever suits your needs. And then through there, I'm just going to pop a twist tie to help me hold it all in place. Okay, so we've got our starting chain here like this. And what we wanna do now is, I'm gonna take up one of our large rings and we need to position these um, chain here so that you've got the first set of rings say going one way like that creating touching at the top um, like a mountain the next set of rings sort of open out like a v or a valley the next set of rings do the mountain thing etc etc down your um, chain so keeping in mind there our first set need to touch at the top, our second set at the bottom, our third set at the top. And we're going to place this ring through the first and the third set of pairs of rings here. So to do that, I'm just going to come in from the outside like this, pick up my third set of rings, bring it around and scoop up my second set of rings. And I'm going to close that up. Okay. So our big ring should be coming around and encircling our second pair of rings. Now our next big ring that we're going to place, we're going to place it through 
the fourth pair of rings and the second pair of rings. So in this case, the two uh, lavender pink, the light pink there, we're going to go through them. Now remember that these rings are forming a V in that they need the bottom of the rings to touch, not the top. So taking very care that we've got our rings positioned the way we want to. I'm going to come in and pick those up and then pick up the ones that are in the center. Now it is a bit fiddly to start with. Things will lock into place a little bit better as it goes along, but that's what you want your weave to look like. So these are on the inside, these next pair on the outside, inside, outside. Okay, so once we're happy with that, we just close that ring up and our weave should look like this. So you can see the rings are maintaining their positions once they've been locked in place by the big ring. So our next one needs to go through this ring, these pair of rings here that are in the center of the big ring we just placed and the next pair of rings that are free in our chain. So these two pairs of rings will always be the same, in this case, the same color and the same positioning. So we've got that mountain going on where they're touching at the top of the weave, not at the back of it. So we want to make sure that our free set of rings are positioned the way we want, that we don't have one, say, positioned like this and the other one the other way. We have them both coming in together. So we go in, we scoop up those and then we bring it around and we scoop up that set that's sitting inside of the big ring. Make sure we keep our new big ring on top of the one that's previous. We don't tuck it in underneath or anything. That's a completely different weave. So we make sure that sits on top and then we just come in and close that ring up. And that's it guys. That's pretty much the weave. So you can see that pattern forming there. We've got Mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley is our next one. You can see the valley is the one that's in the middle of the large ring that we placed. So making sure that our new rings are holding the position we want them to be in. We feed our large ring through them, bring it around, and then go through a corresponding pair of rings up there inside the large ring. Keeping everything sitting on top of the previous ring, we then close it all up. Okay, and you just need to do that down the length of your bracelet. So you just need to pay attention that you've got these rings sitting in the correct pattern, our middle chain. Um, depending on, <laughs> you know, the aspect ratio, the size of the rings that you choose. Some of them might uh, try to flip out the wrong way. Um, you just need to keep an eye on it. So you can see here, our rings in the middle are our lavender ones. And so are the next pair of free rings. They're forming the mountain, so we make sure that they're keeping that shape in the free rings. And then we bring our other Bring around and go through the ones that are in the center. So that's it guys. It's a lovely looking weave but it is really quite simple to put together. It's a little tricky like most chainmail weaves to start up there at the beginning to keep these rings in the correct positioning but once you're a couple of large rings into the weave it really does just fall into position for you and um, becomes um, a nice easy pattern to maintain. Okay, so again, making sure that our pink rings are positioned the same way that they are up here. We just go straight through them and then straight through that previous pair of the same color, locking it all into place. Close that ring up and just keep moving on. Alright guys, 
<laughs> well, that's it. As I said, a super impressively long name um, for what is uh, a fairly easy but very striking weave. All right, guys, well, that's it. That's our tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it and you've added yet another weave to your ever-growing repertoire. Don't forget, guys, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up here at YouTube. Share the video on social media with your friends if you like. And um, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, to consider doing that. Uh, it really does go a long way to helping us. And you'll also be notified every time we add new content to the channel. Speaking of that content, don't forget to check out some of the other videos that we've got um, on our channel. We've got over 190 videos at time of recording, so I'm pretty sure you'll find something there that you are interested in. And last but not least, guys, don't forget to give our shop link up here in the corner a little bit of love. If you click on that, you'll find all the tools and bits and bobs and you know what's that you need to make this project up and many others. All right, guys, thanks again for popping in and spending some time with us. And I hope to catch you again sometime in the very near future. Bye.